Why is everyone on the internet trying to sell you a course? That's what we're exploring in today's mini rant. And I do feel a little bit hot about this, guys. I, I can't I can't deny it. I have a hot take on this is that basically I think like 90% of people selling courses should not be doing it. And I think it's bordering on and or is actually unethical for many of them to be selling the courses that they are specifically selling. Now, let's unpack this a little bit. But before we do that, let's discuss why people are attracted to the idea of selling courses in the first place. And I'll tell you exactly why. It's no surprise, money. It's because they are extremely profitable lines of business. Why would that be? Well, imagine I'm trying to sell you this phone case. This is the one I just took off to record the video I'm talking to you on right now. This is like a $30 phone case, right? So if I was the company, Otter, I think it's called Otterbox. Yeah, great company that sells you this case. Well, I have a cost of goods sold or a COGS on this. I also have an import cost. I have merchant transaction fees. I have an advertising cost to get you to buy this. So there's a lot of costs that go into this. I mean, this product might have a margin of 50 to 70% or so. Anything higher than that would be a little bit outrageous for a product like this. Now in the physical world, when you get into like a luxury good or a cosmetic or a skincare, you can get into very high margin physical goods. Like, you know, a vitamin C serum or something might be $180. It might only cost like $15 to produce or something like that. But far and away in the world of the physical, you have marginal costs. Every single time you sell a new product, you are incurring basically the same set of costs over and over and over again. Advertising, cost of goods, merchant fees, etc. When you're selling a digital good, like a course or an ebook or anything in that realm, you basically have zero marginal costs. Just delivering that product to you doesn't really cost anything. And the only cost you have is really sort of servicing the course, maybe with support or something like that. And you also have whatever you're using to advertise. Now, sometimes that's paid and you're paying money to actually get people to buy this course. But other times you're just sort of tweeting and YouTubing and Instagramming. And I'm going to go into the types of courses I think are pretty much unethical to sell and the types of courses that I think are probably okay and bordering on actually good. Now, I've taken some courses in my life. And the ones that are the best are the ones that are very specific in the skill set they're trying to teach you. And they are collating all the information about that, coalescing it and organizing it in a way that if you follow it, you'll get the damn result. So for example, a course on how to start an herb garden. I'm a gardener. That might be a course that I could make, for example. Now, what would I do to guarantee an outcome on that course? because the information is free. A lot of people who sort of hate on courses, and I actually don't even consider myself one of these people, will say, well, the information is free, so you could just go ahead and you know, go on the internet and you could learn everything. Well, cool, you could also grow your own wheat and make your own flour, right? And then make your own bread. You could also design and engineer your entire car, but we actually do pay human beings for services and goods on this planet because we don't wanna do it ourselves, right? So the idea behind a course is still sound. You are organizing information and structuring it in a way so that someone at the beginning of their journey in a particular skill, let's say growing herbs, can follow it step by step and actually end with a successful result at the end of the course, which would be, in my example, having a successful herb garden. So how would I design that course such that you actually get the result that I'm promising you? Because when you're marketing a course, you are, without doing it, promising results. Sometimes people actually do promise results and that's an entirely different issue. So how I would do that is I would make sure that the course is designed in such a fashion that by going from each individual step, I'm bringing your knowledge to bear at that beginning point. And then I am sort of programming all the different questions and problems you might run into. I'm solving every single one of those for you in the time that you would probably experience it throughout the entirety of that journey. So in my fictional example of an herb garden course, I would say, okay, well, they're not gonna know even what herbs to grow. They're not gonna know if they can grow that herb in a particular climate. I have to solve those problems for them. Okay, well, what are they gonna put it in, right? I'm gonna have to give an example for a balcony, maybe an example for a bigger space, maybe an example for in the ground. So I'm gonna solve all those problems for you. Okay, cool, we're past that hurdle now. Now that you've done that, okay, well now you need to figure out what soil, okay? How do you plant them? Do you start them from seed? Do you not start them from seed? Do you buy them at the nursery? There's a million little questions and the goal is basically to take someone and keep them from getting off the course, right? Like literally and metaphorically, keep them from kind of veering off, 
so that you can just guide them straight to that endpoint. And this is where we get into the problem with a ton of the courses that are out there on the internet, whether it's how to start a successful YouTube channel or how to, I don't know, I mean, buy a small business, all these sorts of things. You can't teach that. You actually cannot teach it in the format of a course because there are too many disparate skill sets to cram into that course. For example, for a YouTube channel, you're going to need to understand uh, some level of cinematography, some level of storytelling. You're going to have to understand the space that you're actually in. You're going to have to understand thumbnail and design theory. You have to understand human psychology with manipulating sort of the click-through rate of a particular video or structuring the story in such a way that someone actually watches it. You're going to have to learn how to speak on a camera well, maybe even how to dress up a set or any of the other things that you could possibly want to know. It's not one skill. It is not how to grow an herb garden or how to build a chair, right? It is how to do a ton of different things that are simply not teachable in the format of a traditional online course and certainly not guaranteeable at the end of the process. So the truth is no one can promise you success if you do X, Y, or Z. Why? Because the world is huge. Cause and effect causes crazy ripples in sort of the probability stream of living on this earth. And none of us could reprogram and do exactly what we did in the past and get the same result again, unless you're like a hardcore determinism believer, which I don't really know where I stand on that. But my point is, even today, if I said, I'm going to go start another YouTube channel and I'm going to go get to another million subscribers, I have a high degree of confidence that I can do it. I'm not 100% certain that I could do it. I'm not 100% certain. And if I'm not 100% certain, why the hell would I sell a course saying that you could be, right? And the reason why most people are doing it is because it makes them a shitload of money. And that's actually the only reason that they're doing it if they're being honest with themselves. That's my personal opinion. Now, the other wrinkle here is that a lot of the people selling courses like this, and I don't really even know who I'm talking to here. I think I'm talking to people who are maybe a little bit earlier in a business journey and might even have bought one of these courses or been persuaded to buy one of these courses. Here's the problem. You need to figure out if the people that are selling you these have actually done something besides sell a course, right? You need to say, hey, where are your markers of success in the real world? Uh, have you done this in a different field? You know, for example, if I did want to try to sell one of these courses, let's say I was like, you know what? I just want to make a ton of money and I'm going to, I'm just going to create like the most profitable course I can do. I would try to create a course that leveraged what I've done in another field, which would be gardening. And I would make a very prescriptive, specific course, like how to design better YouTube thumbnails for, I don't know, educational YouTube channels. I actually know how to do that. And by the end of that process, you actually will gain that skill set. Now that's one of a tapestry of skill sets that you would actually need to start and grow a YouTube channel, but you could kind of pick that up here and there. I mean, that's really no different than going on YouTube and typing in the search box, how to design better thumbnails and then watching that video. Basically that's a mini course. And that's why for a self-starter or someone with high agency, a lot of the courses tend to constrict your thinking instead of expand it. They try to force you down a path that this one random person had success with. And it doesn't actually follow that you'll have success in the same way. I mean, I can speak for myself and my sort of journey on creating content and building a business off that content that my style, my content style is one that I don't really script. I think about it and I vibe it out, but I don't really script exactly what I'm saying. And there's other creators I know that can't do that. They cannot do it at all. It's not possible for them, but they can write brilliant scripts that are beautiful and read well and are delivered beautifully by them. And you honestly wouldn't know that they had written a script. So it's a fascinating phenomenon that I think we're seeing right now because basically everyone is kind of figuring out how to make content better and the benefits that their own life could gain from making that content. And they're rushing to the finish line. They're saying, okay, I built a 5,000 person Twitter audience. I'm now going to show you how to grow to 5,000 on Twitter, bro. Who cares? That is not a valuable thing to really be teaching anyone. In my personal opinion, you've done like three months of work and then you're going to turn around and sell a course on that. You might as well just apply the skill set that you learned to building something of actual value. 
And that's another question I would want you to ask someone or yourself as you are buying this course. Basically, ask yourself, if they really knew how to do this, why would they be building a business, selling a course, telling you how they did it? Why wouldn't they just be doing it?